Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer on Wednesday, the 21st of June. This is the solstice. It is also the day of indigenous prayer in Canada. This is a day to rejoice in the giftings of the indigenous community in our midst. This is a day, too, to lament the history of Canada and the poor treatment of indigenous peoples. It is also a day to pledge ourselves to be stronger and better allies of reconciliation as we walk together into the future. I want to say a brief word about guilt, because I think that days like today, when we remember the abuses against Indigenous people, many settler people, that's people like you and me who are non-Indigenous, we're all settlers here, sometimes we might feel guilty for Canada's history And yet, on the other hand, we recognize we were not there in history when so many of these atrocities were worked and these prejudicial government policies were inaugurated. We are not personally responsible for the historical mess in which we find ourselves. So feeling guilty is not a helpful response. It is better to recognize our history, to learn more about it, and to lament the choices that have been made and the suffering that has been caused. Freed from guilt, we can learn more and strive to be better allies so that our country is more just and honorable to all. So let us unite our hearts in prayer this day. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us worship. Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Let us pray. Lord, you are just and your commandments are eternal. Teach us to love you with all our heart and to love our neighbor as ourselves. For the sake of Jesus our Lord. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. Eli, that's the priest who heard Hannah praying, Eli's wicked sons. Eli's sons were wicked men. They had no regard for the Lord. Now it was the practice of the priest with the people that whenever anyone offered a sacrifice and while the meat was being boiled, the servant of the priest would come with a three-pronged fork in his hand. He would plunge it into the pan or kettle or cauldron or pot, and the priest would take for himself whatever the fork brought up. This is how they treated all the Israelites who came to Shiloh. But even before the fat was burned, the servant of the priest would come and say to the man who was sacrificing, Give the priest some meat to roast. He won't accept boiled meat from you, but only raw. If the man said to him, Let the fat be burned up first, and then take whatever you want. The servant would then answer, No, hand it over now. If you don't, I'll take it by force. This sin of the young men was very great in the Lord's sight, for they were treating the Lord's offering with contempt. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing the linen ephod. Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him when she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take the place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would go home. And the Lord was gracious to Hannah. She conceived and gave birth to three sons and two daughters. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel grew up in the presence of the Lord. Now Eli, who was very old, 
heard about everything his sons were doing to all Israel, and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting. So he said to them, Why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear spreading among the Lord's people. If a man sins against another man, God may mediate for him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke, for it was the Lord's will to put them to death. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and in favor with the Lord and with the people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Eli's sons treated the religious faith of the people with contempt and also treated the Lord with contempt by robbing from the Lord's offering. It may seem like a minor detail to us whether the offering is taken as raw meat or after it is burned as an offering to the Lord, but it is the attitude of contempt, indifference to the people, bullying, and abusing their power, seducing women in the process as well. Such terrible, willful corruption. And they would not turn. Such wickedness among here the clergy, even more difficult to comprehend, and this behavior which must be condemned always and through time. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each one of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Peter addresses the crowd. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together we rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church, which empowers us to have faith and walk with God, the beloved Spirit of God that dwells in the heart of each believer. I love how the Lord here in the gift of tongues, which is the gift of intelligibility across the nations, the Lord is reversing the curse of the Tower of Babel when the nations of the earth were divided by their languages. Here, instead, the heavenly language unites all in praise of God. May the Holy Spirit truly make us one across the nations. Amen. Today on the National Indigenous Day of Prayer, I thought I would read to you the apology for the residential schools given by the primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. That's our prime bishop, the first bishop, 
the Archbishop Michael Pierce, 30 years ago, this coming August 6, as we hear his apology, let us lament together. This was given at the National Native Convocation in Menaki, Ontario, on Friday, August 6, 1993. My brothers and sisters, together here with you, I have listened as you have told your stories of the residential schools. I have heard the voices that have spoken of pain and hurt experienced in the schools and the scars which endure to this day. I have felt shame and humiliation as I have heard of the suffering inflicted by my people, and as I think of the part our church played in that suffering, I am deeply conscious of the sacredness of the stories that you have told, and I am hold in the highest honor those who have told them. I have heard with admiration the stories of people and communities who have worked at healing, and I am aware of how much healing is needed. I also know that I am in need of healing, and my own people are in need of healing, and our church is in need of healing. Without that healing, we will continue the same attitudes that have done such damage in the past. I also know that healing takes a long time, both for people and for communities. I also know that it is God who heals, and that God can begin to heal when we open ourselves our wounds, our failures, and our shame to God. I want to take one step along that path here and now. I accept and I confess before God and you our failures in the residential schools. We failed you. We failed ourselves. We failed God. I am sorry more than I can say that we were part of a system which took you and your children from home and family. I am sorry more than I can say that we tried to remake you in our image, taking from you your language and the signs of your identity. I am sorry, more than I can say, that in our schools so many were abused physically, sexually, culturally, and emotionally. On behalf of the Anglican Church of Canada, I present our apology. I do this at the desire of those in the church like the National Executive Council who know some of your stories and have asked me to apologize. I do this in the name of many who do not know these stories. And I do this even though there are those in the church who cannot accept the fact that these things were done in our name. As soon as I am home, I shall tell all the bishops what I have said and ask them to cooperate with me and with the National Executive Council in helping this healing at the local level. Some bishops have already begun this work. I know how often you have heard words which have been empty because they have not been accompanied by actions. I pledge to you my best efforts and the efforts of our church at the national level to walk with you along the path of God's healing. He says a few words and then concludes, Thank you for listening to me. It's important also to read the response of the elders the next day. On behalf of this gathering, we acknowledge and accept the apology that the primate has offered on behalf of the Anglican Church of Canada. It was offered from his heart with sincerity, sensitivity, compassion, and humility. We receive it in the same manner. We offer praise and thanks to our Creator for His courage. We know it wasn't easy. Let us keep Him in our hearts and prayers that God will continue to give Him the strength and courage to continue with His tasks. And now for a brief litany of healing offered by the church in Rupert's Land in 2017. The response is, Hear us, O Christ. Let us pray. O God, We pray for the gifts of your grace and your love, which never give up on us and is faithful for forever. Inspire our minds with the vision of the reconciliation of your kingdom in this time and place. Together, hear us, O Christ. Touch our eyes that we may see the sacredness in all creation. Together, hear us, O Christ. Touch our ears that we may hear from every mouth of every peoples the hunger for hope and stories of refreshment. Together, hear us, O Christ. Touch our lips, that we may speak of the beauty of every tongue and dialect 
proclaiming the wonderful works of God together. Hear us, O Christ. Touch our hearts that we may discern your mission in which you call us to be immersed, particularly in partnership with the first peoples of this land. Together, hear us, O Christ. Touch our minds that we may witness to your good news in our neighborhoods, communities, and all parts of the world. Together, hear us, O Christ. Touch our hands that we may forever shun violence and embrace the work you give us to do. Together, hear us, O Christ. Draw your church together, O Lord, into one great company of disciples, together following our Lord Jesus Christ into every walk of life, together serving you in your mission in the world, and together witnessing to your love on every continent and island of your creation. We ask this in the name of the risen Christ, in whom we are one. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And the blessing of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier be upon you and yours this day and forevermore. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Wednesday.